Friends, hello. As you know, on our channel there are interviews with prisoners of war of the Russian army and collaborators. There are interviews with people who went over to the side of good and joined the armed forces of Ukraine, as well as with those people who arrived on military equipment. The coordination headquarters for the treatment of prisoners of war asked to tell one story, from which it was decided to create a new section dissidents. These are dissident people, as well as people who disagree with the current government. This is an interesting topic. This topic has not been raised here, but there are such people, and they are destroying Russia from the inside. It will be fun. Hello. How are you? We've arrived. They barely let us out. This is for you. You love sweets, right? You're scared? Very. Why? Although I had recorded a video before, I was alone there. Didn't Bandera's guys eat you? No, but once someone tried to hack my account. Who? Someone from Moscow, but they didn't succeed and they blocked my video. FSB officers? I think so. Who else could do this? How are you? Everything is okay now. Why? How long ago did we start the video? No. Over the past five days I have experienced a lot. A long journey, a lot of moving and excitement. Can I call you by your name? Certainly. Please introduce yourself. Here or there. My name is Krinina Irina Mikhailovna. I am a citizen of the Russian Federation. I came to Kiev from Krasnoyarsk. Do you give voluntary consent to the recording and publication of this conversation? Certainly, yes. So that there is no reason for complaints due to copyright infringement. Why did you come to Kyiv? For me this is a very difficult question to which there is no clear answer. I came here to convey to the citizens of the Russian Federation that we are living a lie. For more than a year and a half we have been living in such a lie that when I realized everything, I could not stay in Russia. Therefore, I am here to convey at least some information to the people of Russia who care about the war and who can somehow influence the end of the war. Because we are Russians, we can somehow stop this. How can you prove that you are a citizen of the Russian Federation? People may think that you are a Ukrainian actor. I have a video on YouTube where I recorded a video message in Russia about my common law husband. I can show you my passport. She has a passport, I have seen it several times. It is forbidden to show passport data, so we will not do this. Who did you come here with? I came with two daughters. How old are they? Seven and ten. What do you have left there? All that was left was real estate and animals. Are you planning to return there? I'm afraid to go back. Why are you afraid? Because my action goes beyond the understanding of many people. I consulted with several lawyers before making this important decision to come to Kyiv. All the lawyers, even military lawyers, unanimously told me that this is very dangerous and if there is an opportunity to ask for political asylum, then it is better to stay in Kyiv. Then let's go back a little. Tell us your story. Who did you come here for? How did this person end up here? What are his views? What is your attitude towards war? I came here for my common-law husband, Evgeny Yurevich Kovtov. 
He came to war during mobilization. He was taken away on the ninth day of mobilization. On the 29th of September he was given a summons, and on the morning of the 30th, he was already at the military registration and enlistment office and was no longer released. We couldn't even collect his things. He didn't have time to undergo a medical examination. There was nothing like that. On July 7, 2023, he was captured, which I learned about myself from Ukrainian telegram channels. I found a video in which I saw how he was taken prisoner. After that, I immediately ran to the military registration and enlistment office, they recorded the information and then, as I call it, the seven circles of hell began for me. That is, for about four weeks I tried to get him recognized as a prisoner of war. The video was not serious evidence for them. I was told that the only body that can recognize him as a prisoner of war is the military unit to which he belongs. Many people do not know that only a military unit can submit documents to the Ministry of Defense to recognize a serviceman as a prisoner of war. Who tells them about this? The military unit must receive a report from the commander who is in Ukraine. That is, they say that video is not a compelling reason for them, because it could be video editing. They need a report from the commander. A special procedure must take place, including the interrogation of colleagues who saw the soldier being taken prisoner or, perhaps, how he himself surrendered. That is, if he himself surrendered, then he will not be recognized as a prisoner of war, but will be recognized as a deserter. I have not yet heard that if a Russian serviceman is captured and there are no eyewitnesses who will tell the circumstances of his capture, then he is recognized as a deserter. I was told this. Where? This was told to me on the hotline of our military unit. They said that they have a special secret procedure. I asked where I could read information about this. They said it was a classified procedure. I called them every day and talked to them every day. Therefore, they told me that they would interrogate my husband's colleagues and would establish exactly how he was captured. If he was captured, then he is a prisoner of war, and if he surrendered himself, then he is a deserter. I didn't know that. Every time we learned some interesting details. Did they say this at the military unit? In the military unit number, 71289, in the city of Usarysk on the hotline. Did you contact the commander who was in Ukraine? Who took Zhenya prisoner? No, the commander of your military unit, who is in Ukraine and who was supposed to give a report. I couldn't contact him, because I don't have any of his information. I wish I could contact him, but I couldn't. After four weeks of agony, during which no one could give me an answer, the only solution I came up with was publishing a post in the, don't expect me from Ukraine, group. I asked my husband's colleagues to contact the commander and report that Zhenya and the other guys have not yet been recognized as prisoners of war. We can insert this post here, I saved it. Whether there will be an insert here or not is unknown. Was he recognized as a prisoner of war? Yes. The telegram post helped. Yes. Less than 24 hours later, my husband was recognized as a prisoner of war. Do you know who did this? I don't know. The next day I called the hotline and was told that they received the information literally two hours ago and were preparing documents for the Ministry of Defense. I understand. Your husband was captured on the 7th of July. When did you become aware of this? 12th of July. From the video you found. Which I found myself. Fine. Who took him prisoner? Uh, the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade, created by veterans of the Azov Brigade. Yes, he was captured by soldiers from the Azov Brigade and the video was recorded by Bileitsky. All Ukrainians know who it is. You can continue the story. 
On the internet I found the phone number of this commander. It must have been around the 15th or 16th of July. I called him on WhatsApp. He answered my call and spoke to me very kindly, but was unable to help. He said that more than a week had passed and they had been transferred to another place. What did you ask for? I wanted to talk to my husband. I asked if I could talk to him, but they were already in another place. That's all? He asked about how I felt about the war, why I let my husband come here, and similar questions. What did you say? I said they didn't ask me. No one asked me if I wanted my husband to join the army. He simply told me the fact that he was going to war. I immediately reacted extremely negatively to this, because I think that in the 21st century it is stupid to behave like in the Middle Ages. Wars lead to nothing. It is better to immediately sit down at the negotiating table and discuss everything. Why should people die? Is it really possible to reach an agreement? You can at least try to do this. With whom and what should Ukraine negotiate? There is a war going on in the country. Yes. Who attacked? We. A year and a half later, the question arises, with whom to negotiate? Someone must be a representative of the Russian Federation. Who is this man? This is Putin. Should we negotiate with him? It seems to me that this is pointless. Why? The last year and a half has shown why this is so. Because all agreements are unilaterally violated by the Russian Federation. Please describe Putin, your president. In all my interviews I call him king. How can I characterize him? Should I characterize him based on the propaganda that talks about him? I don't know him personally. What can I say? I can say that he is a man with great ambitions. He probably wanted to make his name in history, play war, conquer territories, although we don't need them. I don't know. I watched Putin's interview with the mothers of fallen servicemen. He invited these mothers to a meeting. I saw this video. He says there absolutely seriously that otherwise the dead could, for example, become alcoholics, but they gave their lives in the war, and this is an honor. That is, he generally spoke some nonsense. I just can't understand how anyone can say that to mothers. What happened after you talked with Bielitsky? Yes. She doesn't know who Bielitsky is. I showed the photo, she said that she actually identified her husband from this video and got through to the commander. And it was Bielitsky, the head of Azov. What happened next? Do you mean all the authorities that I went through? Yes. Later that same day, after visiting the military registration and enlistment office, I went to the military prosecutor's office of Krasnoyarsk. I came there with this video, to which they answered that they had nothing to do with it. They advised me to go to Moscow and didn't even listen to me anymore. I left the building of the military prosecutor's office, where I was greeted very coldly, got into the car and started calling the Red Cross. I left an application there and began writing appeals to the Moscow military prosecutor's office directly from the car. After that, I began to seek help from the human rights commissioners in Krasnoyarsk, the human rights commissioners in Moscow, the military police, Putin and the Krasnoyarsk deputy Shvikin. He is a former military man. Everyone turns to him and he helps with the exchange of prisoners of war from Krasnoyarsk. I also asked him for help. I also contacted the defenders of the Fatherland Foundation and they offered us money. We went there with Zhenya's mother and refused money. How does she feel about all this? At first she didn't believe it was him. She went through a period of denial. 
At first she didn't believe it, but then she was overcome with horror from the realization. She is very worried about her son, very worried. I didn't even tell her that I was going to Kyiv, so that her health wouldn't deteriorate from the worries, because it was a very difficult path. Mm -hmm. In fact, you did this all August. Yes, this was all of July and August. Yes, July too. He was recognized as a prisoner of war on August 9th and I was really looking forward to the exchange. I thought that if there was an exchange in July, then there would be one in August, but it didn't happen. I thought that there would definitely be an exchange in September, but again there is no exchange. What did they tell you? Why is there no exchange? They don't say anything. They write unsubscribes, they have a favorite phrase, effective measures. That is, they are taking effective measures to return Zhenya from captivity. I still don't know exactly what effective measures these are. As I understand it, they write the same text to everyone. Yes. And besides, the Ministry of Defense now has an automatic system for responding to applications. They developed and invested in an auto-response system. Robots and not people are already answering us. Does the answer come instantly? It does not arrive instantly, but the message says that it is in test mode. There may be processing delays, but it is clear that the answering machine is responding. Mm -hmm. At the Ministry of Defense, I was told that he was included in the list for the exchange of prisoners of war. I asked when the exchange would take place, and they told me that this was classified information. Where is the guarantee that it will be exchanged? We have a thousand prisoners of war in Ukraine, or rather in Ukraine. In Ukraine. Thousands. To Russia. I will speak to Russia. There are thousands of prisoners of war, but they change 45 at a time. 45 by 45, this is done for show. I have accumulated so much indignation, I can't tell you. The fact is that many relatives believe that it is you who do not give up prisoners. Do you understand why I came here to convey the information that we are living a lie? What is the mood among neighbors, friends and in general? I want to tell you one more very important point. After I realized that our state, frankly speaking, does not care about the prisoners, the dead, I'm not even talking about the dead, whose bodies lie there for two months and are not taken away. A separate interview can be recorded on this topic. When I understood all this, I went to a military lawyer, and he recommended that I turn to the public, and I published a video message. In August, within a month, I found a lot of relatives of soldiers from Zhenya's brigade, who were also captured or disappeared. We teamed up and recorded two videos. We posted them on YouTube and Telegram channels. They scattered very quickly. I want to thank everyone who also started posting videos. I noticed that after my videos, many people responded, wrote to me, and I helped them record new videos. People responded and were not afraid to record their video messages and tell their stories about what they experienced, where they turned, and how they are looking for their relatives. Russian propagandists reacted to this. 
I was already in Kyiv when I saw the anti-Ukrainian post by Kashevarova and Soy. They very beautifully and point by point explain that with these videos we are allegedly worsening the situation of prisoners of war. They justify this by saying that Ukraine benefits from this. Ukraine will not exchange such prisoners, because relatives work for its benefit by recording videos. But I have a question. Why? No. Where is the proof? Let's say a certain woman's husband was captured. She turned to the Ministry of Defense and sat in silence for six months. Six months later, her husband was returned to her. And another citizen went everywhere, recorded videos, started a riot, and came to Ukraine herself because her husband was not returned to her. They write very beautiful texts that have a legal and psychological impact, but people cannot logically figure it out on their own. What I want to say by this is that if I had seen that the exchanges took place in August and September, I would not have come here. I would sit, wait and believe that the Russian side is really exchanging prisoners, but unfortunately no exchanges took place. However, there are no exchanges of prisoners of war. The video that Arena is talking about is on our Telegram channel. Here we will insert a link to the channel. We posted it on Telegram. Have you been threatened for these videos? No. Nobody threatened me. I also wanted to tell you how I was summoned to the FSB. Does this need to be told? <laughs> Um, yes, because people are interested in it. When Zhenya was captured, seven more people were captured with him. And we thought that Vova was there with him, and we knew his wife. Is Vova a prisoner? It turned out that Vova was not captured. When Zhenya was captured, his mother decided that Vova was also captured and asked him to inform Vova's wife, Gala, about this. We contacted Galia, she said that Vova was not captured, but returned back to the detachment or camp, I don't know what they call it. As a result, this Vova, he, Vova was very indignant because they were being used as cannon fodder. Now there are a lot of videos where soldiers are indignant, and Vova was also indignant. He called Zhenya's mother and told him how he lay under a tank for two days to get to his people, that no one came for him, they abandoned him there. <coughs> but this is not a fact, Vova's wife, Galia, told me all this under the influence of emotions, and I told her about the, I want to live, program and advised Vova to surrender. I began to tell her to surrender under this program. I sent her contact information, explained how this was happening, and she ran to the FSB and wrote a statement against me that I was a Ukrainian spy. What happened next, Ukrainian spy? 
I came to the FSB. They interrogated me for two and a half hours and released me. What did they ask? They asked everything. The interrogation began from afar. They called me and said that they were calling about my husband. I thought they wanted to help. I thought maybe they would exchange him. They were missing some information. And 15 minutes later I was already at the FSB. They started asking me standard questions about where I went, how I found out, and so on. About an hour and a half later they told me about this Galia. Did he say it himself? Yes. About Gala? Yes. This country is just. Operative agents, you are great, you don't abandon or betray your own. Did they check the phone? Yes, in my presence. What did they find? Nothing, since I'm here. Probably, I don't know. How was your trip to the FSB overall? Everything changed when he told me the reason why I was called. I went there expecting that they wanted to help me, but in fact they wanted to put me in jail. You understand? This made me very upset. How did the trip to the FSB ultimately end? Did they just let you go? Yes. Did they write something down? Yes, it was an interrogation. Was it official? Yes, a two-page official interrogation. It's really terrible that people write denunciations against each other. These are denunciations, aren't they? Yes. Denunciations to the FSB. I won't hide it, I met Irina at the airport when she arrived. Naturally, I did not travel in silence, I communicated and know a lot of things that cannot be talked about. What poster was in the FSB office? When I went into his office, he had a sticker with Navalny on his safe. I then told him, you have such an unusual sticker. You didn't tell me this. He laughed it off. FSB agent with a Navalny poster on his safe, hello to you. Vladimir. I know this story in detail. For example, about Beletsky, I even showed her because she didn't know. We drove for a long time, it was inconvenient to remain silent, so we talked along the way. Let's tell you how we got in touch with you. It all started in August when I realized. I realized that there was no point in turning to the state. I started contacting volunteers. I started contacting public organizations such as Wake Up. The legal consultant helped me a lot. Then in the organization, go through the forest, and, be or. Anyone who doesn't know about the be or channel will have a link here somewhere. Subscribe to the channel and say hi from me. I've been watching this channel for a long time, five years. They have interesting analytics. They have a chatbot, they help, they have military lawyers, ordinary lawyers. They help in difficult situations, that is, if you are relatives who no longer know where to turn. For those who have already applied everywhere, you can write to them in the chatbot. They have very competent lawyers, they will advise you and help you. With their help, I found Dimitri. When I was looking for the necessary information, I found an article on the internet from the year 2022 that in Ukraine there is a program, Let's Return the Son to the Mother. Dima said that such a program exists, but not a single mother came through it. None arrived. He also said that they also have a program, let's give the wife her husband back, but I haven't heard about it. 
Thus began planning my trip here. I immediately realized that I would come here. If such a program exists, then I will come according to it. I passed on her contact information to the I Wanna Live project, because it is essentially connected with life. Then she began to communicate with her curator coordinator. When were you informed that you would go? I waited a very long time for permission. I told the coordinator that I agreed to the trip, and then waited three weeks for approval from the military. Approval was received, but all this time I was not inactive, but communicated with lawyers. The lawyers all unanimously told me that I should not return. Because if I return, Zhenya will be blackmailed because of me and sent back to war. I was told that we could be blackmailed as children, and that at best I would be imprisoned. This is how they described to me terrible pictures of my future. Who explained this? Lawyers who know our legislation. I realized that I needed to take the children and ask for political asylum. What did they tell you? The coordinator said that he would clarify all these details, and after some time he gave me a positive answer. Then we decided whether to buy a one-way ticket. It's good that we didn't do that, I think they wouldn't have let me out. We bought a ticket to Turkey for seven days. Who bought you this ticket? They gave me money from this fund and bought me a ticket. Finally, when did the process of this departure or escape begin? Is this an escape? This is an escape, a very scary one. I was very worried. Why is it an escape and not a trip? Because I didn't tell anyone anything. In Krasnoyarsk, absolutely no one knew that I was going to Kyiv. I told everyone that I was going on vacation with my children to Turkey. Who did you work there? We haven't talked about this yet. I worked as a chief accountant in a commercial company. We rented out apartments for long-term rent. Realtors? No, we have our own property, and we rented it out. What was your salary? About 60. For Krasnoyarsk is this a small, medium or large salary? Now it seems to me that this is the average salary. What do you have left there? Apartment. Is the apartment large or small? A nice apartment of 100 square meters in a prestigious area and I think I lost it. Why? It seems to me that after the release of this video there will be a search there. You know, like in detective films when they break locks. What will they look for there and what will they find? I don't know. I don't know what they want to find there. Tell the FSB now what is and where it is, so that they don't make a big mess. Everything there has already been cleaned, I cleaned everything before leaving. Firstly, the apartment. Yes. What else? This is all. Only the apartment was registered to me. Animals, beasts. Yes, I left the animals. It's a pity? Yes. I placed them in good hands. When and where did you fly out? This will interest everyone. I need to refresh my memory. We forgot to turn on the light. On the morning of the 17th I flew out. From Krasnoyarsk I arrive at the airport and go to passport control. They look at our passports and say that additional verification is required. They sat us on a bench, took our documents and left. We sat for about 15 to 20 minutes, but it seemed to me that we sat for 3 or 4 hours. The children constantly ask, Mom, what happened with us? Why do they let everyone through, but not us? I'm all on edge, I'm breaking into a sweat, I'm worried. Did the children know? The children didn't know. They thought they were flying to the sea. They collected swimsuits and swimming circles. I didn't tell them that we wouldn't need it. 
They took everything, slippers, swimsuits for a holiday at sea. Were you asked any questions during these 15 minutes? We sat on a bench, then the shift manager invited us. For some reason, she began to question my eldest daughter, asking her questions. What was she asking? They asked her last name, first name, patronymic, date of birth, how old she was. They reviewed my passport many times, it is new, already with a fingerprint, I received it in December. I can't understand why they checked him so many times, but in the end they released us. Tell me, what were you afraid of when you flew from Krasnoyarsk? It seems to me that the night before the flight I almost died. I was in such an emotional state, I cannot describe how afraid I was. When I arrived in Antalya, it was as if a weight of fears had been lifted from my shoulders. That's it, I crossed the border, I could calm down. What were you most afraid of when you got to Kyiv? I was afraid that I would stand out because I didn't know the language. For some reason I thought that everyone here only spoke Ukrainian and that if I said anything in Russian, they would beat me. It was really funny, now I'll start telling it, and she'll continue. The incident in the front door, after my conversation with the concierge. What happened when we got into the elevator? I said, what, does everyone speak Russian? She covered her face and said, God, I'm so ashamed. Because she asked what everyone really spoke Russian here. I still make fun of her all the time that now Bandera's men will kill her. He makes fun of me all the time. Before the interview, he told me that he was taking me to the torture chamber. Who in Russia now knows that you are here? My friends know I'm here. One of my good friends. She is my good friend in misfortune. Her husband is missing. By the way, I want to clarify information with you. Question for the military. Yes. Her husband has gone missing, and she also cannot find the truth that we are seeking. But today the children's father found out. When and where did they find out? I told them when we were in Turkey. What did you tell her and what was the answer? I told her that I was going for Zhenya, that I would not return to Russia. She said I was crazy. Second friend. The second friend said that if her husband was alive, then she was also ready to go after him. What did the father say? My father is going through a storm of emotions right now. The children's father is meant. The father of the children takes everything very close to his heart in life. But now his emotions are just going through the roof. He is now on duty, and I have been writing to him since the end of August, beginning of September to come and see the children. I wrote to him asking him to come, but he put it off. Now, since he didn't get to see the kids before leaving, he blames me. I talked with the coordinator who led Ira. She wanted to come alone at first. Everything was planned and built based on the fact that she would arrive alone. The children had to stay with the first father because the second one was in captivity. But the first father could not come. In addition, the lawyers said that it is absolutely necessary to either go with children or not to go at all. In fact, she abandoned her car, apartment, pets, and parking space there. She gave up everything. And there was little time, because on Wednesday she was told that she could already go. She was supposed to leave on Saturday, which means she only had two working days to resolve everyday issues. It is also necessary to take into account that it worked. For the last two working days, from morning until evening, I finished all the unfinished work. 
She sent donations from a corporate account, and now will call you at work and tell you that you won't come. Yes, vacation? Till Monday. Since it's Friday, I think people will need to be warned, but we'll get there. I just came up with this. There will be a meeting between her and her husband. Tomorrow, yes, the military said that they would organize a meeting tomorrow, in this place. How will he react? I don't know, I'm very worried. I'll pretend we didn't discuss this yesterday. What will he say? We'll talk tomorrow. It won't be right if I repeat your words. I'm afraid that he will say that he doesn't know me at all. What's the second option? Secondly, he will become completely numb and will not be able to say anything, and thirdly, he will be happy or scared. How many times have I asked this question? So many. You will see him, and then what? We? What are you hoping for? I will talk to him. We will see this conversation, I myself don't know what it will be about, since I don't know this prisoner. Vova also did not communicate, the interviews were not recorded. What's on his mind? How did he get captured? Was he taken or did he give himself up? Tomorrow we will find out everything. How are you where do you live? There is no need to say the address. I understand it. I was given a three-room apartment, very comfortable, in good repair, in an excellent, quiet location. They provided me with everything I needed, and we are settling in. She spent the night in Kyiv for the first time when drones were flying. I have a video of how I talked to her this morning, but I don't know whether I'll embed it or not. She overslept, since we have different time zones, the difference with Krasnoyarsk is 4 hours. Yes. It's 1 in the morning for us, it's 5 in the morning for them, considering that from Sunday to Wednesday she was on the road for 4 days, plus 2 children, it's hard. I didn't hear anything. Her children heard. Anya heard. What did she say? She said she heard explosions and a siren. But I didn't believe her, I thought she made it up. Then in the morning Dima confirmed that there was an arrival one and a half kilometers from our hotel. I know more because you already told me. What did your friends tell you about Kyiv? Are you talking to them? Now you are at a distance and cut off from everyone. She has two friends who know she is here and a husband. Judging by the fact that you haven't talked about it yet, you don't want to talk about talking to your husband, right? I can't talk about what she doesn't want to talk about. What did your friends tell you? What did they say? They said they were worried about me. When I showed them the apartment on video, that everything was fine with me, they began to calm down. We'll call now. By the way, we have time. Yes. What will I tell her now? Just say hello and ask how she is doing. Tell her that you are in Kyiv. Hello. Y U L. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Fine. How are you? Everything is fine. I am now in Ukraine. How? I had an escape plan, so to speak, which was a success. I am in Kyiv with my children. I asked for political asylum here and I will never return to Russia. Seriously? Of course, seriously. Why didn't you say? I'm telling you now, I couldn't tell you before. Right now. Okay, I heard you, then I'll look for a new employee. Of course, I was so worried about this that I quit everything so urgently. Here, it's a joke? I'm not kidding, how can you joke about such topics? Tell me what do you think about this? I don't know, have you thought about everything for a long time? Why didn't you tell me at home? 
At first I thought of going after Zhenya alone and returning. But after consulting with military lawyers, I realized that blackmail would begin with the children or me. If possible, it is better not to return at all. Who did you leave the dog and cat with? I gave them away. Did you give them away in advance? Yes. You weren't planning on coming back, were you? I bought a vacation ticket in order to be released. Understood? Understood. Then, it's okay. Tell me, do we have any payments, or is there something serious due? I could find a new person in a week. We have nothing serious, we will discuss this topic with you. I'll call you later, don't worry. I'm shocked. Everyone is shocked, I myself am shocked, can you imagine? Where do you live? They gave me a very nice three-room apartment, and we are living there for now. Now I will decide. Children need to be sent to school. This will be homeschooling or online. Something like this. Did you take all the documents? I didn't take the documents, it's impossible. I wouldn't be allowed because they're watching all this. Now I will contact the school and figure out how to do all this. When I flew out of Krasnoyarsk, no one knew anything, not even the children. I didn't tell anyone because I was afraid that they wouldn't let me out after my videos. You understand, I already had problems. I understand, but, to be honest, I'm a little shocked. At least you said, otherwise I would have been waiting for you on Monday. Then I will start looking for a new employee for work. Come on, good luck. Bye. If you have any problems, call me. I'll call you from my Ukrainian number, save it. I think it's better not to. Bye. Bye. Guys, here's the story. This is the first case of a person escaping from Russian territory. I classify Russia as North Korea. When it became known that the military offered me to shoot this video, of course I agreed. She managed to leave, but she doesn't give many details, and I understand her, so I can't comment on it. That day, on the Telegram channel, I published two videos about how Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia and Finland prohibit the entry of cars with Russian license plates into their territory. You know? Yes. Russia is North Korea, which is closing the border. If someone thinks that there is nothing special in what Arena did, this is not so. Try to give up everything you had in two days, a good apartment, a car, a parking space, an animal, a job. Were there any problems with money? No. On average, how much money was available per month for yourself and your children? About 150,000, with alimony. This is with or without Genia's salary. I didn't have his money. She had 150,000 a month. She essentially ran away from a comfortable life into the unknown. I know that people will write different things in the comments. It was necessary, and someday the true motives for why this happened will be revealed. Tomorrow there will be a meeting with Zhenya. I'm really looking forward to. I can't say what I'm worried about, because I've calmed down now. You said that I overslept because of the road, but in fact, in the last months of July, August, September, I slept very poorly. Now that I'm here, I don't jump up in the middle of the night, I don't lose my breath during sleep. I myself am a very emotional person. 
Я сама по себе очень эмоциональный человек. I see what is happening in the country. In our country. Many people, in my opinion, do not know that we are currently at war. I look at these smiling, satisfied faces, they live in their own little worlds and don't understand that people are dying. Our people, your people, For what? I really want. So that my video, which you and I recorded, is watched by as many people as possible and realizes that this is war. I can't wrap my head around what this war is for. Because one president went crazy and decided to play war? So real people die there. As for the fake news, I believed in it. I believed that you really bombed yourself, even at the very beginning, and then you say that we bombed you. When I watched Russian news, I believed it. And now I turn to independent sources. And I understand that Russian news is built on lies. And they approach this lie very professionally. Everything there is written by psychologists and lawyers. I don't know by whom, but it was written in such a way that it is easier to believe that Ukraine is blowing itself up than to believe that we are doing it and that we. As for the events in Buka, it is easier to believe that Ukraine laid out the mannequins. They know the human psyche and know how to influence it. It's just that now there is destruction, destruction of Ukrainian cities, destruction of civilians. Although we say, prevent the death of civilians, destruction is now taking place. Well, I overslept again. My child heard an explosion one and a half kilometers from the hotel. As far as I understand, the air defense went off, and there were no serious consequences or destruction, right? We can't tell where things explode. Aha, uh -huh, so what? They, as they say, have eliminated the threat, that it's just the fragments scattered, and if there had been a hit, the consequences would have been much worse. Yes, her friend was very worried and talked about the bombing of Kyiv. Yes. I want to stop this discussion about how we're shooting at ourselves for everyone who. Yes, let's close this issue. For all people who even a little try to think. Listen, all the Russians who have this crap shoved into their heads, and it penetrates and remains. Can you imagine how many of our troops should take part in the shelling? The number of these people. What to do with them then? That is, the military deliberately launches missiles at Kyiv, where their friends, acquaintances or relatives may be. That is, this truth that we allegedly bomb ourselves should be known to many, well, that is, hundreds, or even thousands of artillerymen and other military personnel. Where should I put them? This is bullshit. And the main question, why didn't they bomb themselves before February 24, 2022? Why didn't we bomb ourselves? Watch the interview with Vova, more than 700 of them have already been recorded. What the prisoners say. Who bombed whom? You shoot your soldiers, blow them up with mines. A video appeared on our Telegram channel, to prevent your soldiers from surrendering, you kill them. Therefore, the topic of bombing ourselves is closed, and we will not return to it again. And the topic of the liberation of Donbass. What does Donbass have to do with Kyiv? Why did the troops go to Kyiv? I don't understand where the logic is here. This is the first video with Ira, there will be more videos. She's here for a purpose, the military told me. This is not just the arrival of a person and not just the organization of a meeting between a wife and a prisoner of war. You understand that he will not be released tomorrow and will not be released in a month. I understand. That is, she knows this very well. I was told about this in advance. That he will not be released, he will not be given political asylum. This is a separate story and a separate procedure. 
he will be brought for an interview, a conversation, it will be recorded, and he will go to where he was. She will remain here, the road back will be closed to her. Here's the story. Write in the comments, like, go to Telegram, subscribe, because we have a lot of interesting things there. Distribute this video so that as many Russians as possible can watch it, because, as I understand, half of the views there are from Ukrainians. No. No? There are fewer Ukrainians now. Less? 60% of traffic is from Russia. If a million people watched the video, 600,000 people from Russia watched it. But we don't track further, because the videos are copied and posted. Mm -hmm. Dissident, let's call you that, can we use this term? Yes, I looked up the meaning of this word. Do you have anything to add? You wanted to talk about something during a smoke break. Oh, I wanted to add about the collective appeal. That is, I realize that our appeals separately have no force. Well, that is, we write and write, and in the end it all ends up somewhere in the offices. And I decided for myself that if, perhaps, we managed to find relatives from Zhenya's brigade, and we recorded a collective appeal, then maybe something would change. I found 22 soldiers, six of them prisoners of war, the rest were missing. We gathered, 102 relatives, it took me 10 days to write a collective appeal. We wrote it on 20 to 5 sheets of paper. I sent this appeal to Putin, to the military prosecutor's office, to the military police, and we also decided to write to Katerov. For what? Because he exchanges prisoners. We thought that he would help exchange Ukrainians for our prisoners of war. He can't do it. In short, we also wrote to him. Of all of them, Katerov immediately answered, you won't believe it. Yes? Literally a few days later he wrote that this was not in his competence and that we should contact the Ministry of Defense, but he could not help us. Everyone else ignored us. That is, it has already passed. And not even a month has passed. On the 25th of August the first sent. By law, they have 30 calendar days and another 3 days to provide a response. As I finish the conversation, I'll ask the question I asked her. 30 times. Yes, you asked me about this very often. Why are you here? I want to help stop the war. Can you do it? I want to convey this information to Russian citizens. About what is really happening in Ukraine now. In order for Russia to collapse, you said in Ukraine, in Russia. She is here with certain goals and objectives. This is not just the case, as they may write in the comments now. That's why. I want my family not to be afraid. Why, I can't understand why they took a man, then killed him, I don't know, he was captured. Okay, they didn't kill him, he died. I just think that Putin is a murderer, but okay, the man was captured. Why do they sit and be silent? They are even afraid to record videos. This government should be afraid of us, not we of it. That is, our people are so intimidated, so intimidated that they are afraid. They just sit, remain silent and wait. What are they waiting for? What to expect? Everything is already clear. Nobody cares. We'll make sure they care. Thank you.